Pakistan crushes Armenia with angry Twitter mom. Pakistan standing in allegiance with Azerbaijan in the bitter, str bitter struggle for the usual things that <clears throat> nation states struggle over. Resources, people, prestige, whatever, you know, whatever. Uh, anyway, the uh, the angry uh, Pakistani mob has uh, descended upon the scene with the alacrity and wit and charm of uh, what you would usually expect from a Twittertarian. And with the devastating hashtag power of Twitter at its disposal, was able to successfully eliminate the nation state of Armenia from existence. Pakistan has effectively ended Armenia's career with facts and logic. At least, uh, that's kind of how it's, uh, who knows. What are you doing there, ma'am? 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 Please, I don't need that. Pakistani bots on Twitter vow to fight for Muslim-majority Azerbaijan after clashes erupt with Armenia over border issues. This is not a border issue. It's an opportunity or a dis whatever. It's just the reality of power, circumstance undoing itself in the lives of uh, of the poor's for the most part. With uh, everyone, yeah, yeah, in the lives of the poor's, pretty much. So Pakistan extends support to Azerbaijan in the ongoing conflict with Armenia. Tensions have gripped between. Armenia and Azerbaijan on Sunday morning after clashes erupted in the breakaway in Nagorno-Karabakh region. And I uh, talked about this as, what's it, another name for it? It's a rot, so it, hard time remembering names, but uh, it's, uh, it, this is basically, there are these uh, two places, I forget the name of the, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the Azerbaijani one. Let me see if I can get a uh, Azerbaijani. Let me see the Pakistani uh, Azerbaijani friend friendship there, and and that's always good. Uh, but uh, let's go, let's get the Azerbaijan because I want want to make sure I got that the names of these uh, players right. You got Azerbaijan, you got Armenia, and there you see that little uh, puppy there. And we're just gonna get to the map there and. You see Azerbaijan, Armenia. You notice there's this little region here. Uh, Nak Chivan. That's what I was trying to remember. That's like the version of the, uh, what they're calling here, the uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, and this is uh, the, the, the uh, I think, the Republic of Arats. So following the clashes with Azerbaijan, Armenia has declared martial law and also mobilized its male population for war. And we covered this in a story, I believe, a couple of days ago, maybe the last uh, in, in the last week, I believe, or no, it was a special. That's right, it was a special uh, a episode on was it Sunday night? I can't even remember. That's pretty pretty sure Sunday night. The two sides clashed each other, clashed each other. I think he just missed, missed the word with, of course, obviously. Sorry. The the two sides clash with each other in Nagorno-Karabakh, a mainly ethnic Armenian region inside Azerbaijan, which declared independence in 1991. There you go, Azeri. That's a, the Azeri forces have shelled the regions of Nagorno-Karabakh, while Armenian forces continue to shell Azeri military and civil civilian positions in retaliations. Meanwhile, retaliations. Okay, so the Azeri are, yeah. Those guys are on the, I'm assuming, on the side of the uh, Azerbaijanis. Meanwhile, two Azerbaijani helicopters have also been allegedly shot down by Armenian forces. They, I want to add allegedly because Azerbaijanis are like, Yo, man, what, 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 what's, what's it talking about, Willis? Meanwhile, they released other stuff. Like, yo, man, look at all these Armenian tanks getting to, to the face. And then everybody's like, yo, man, look, man, we're, we got better, look, we got better YouTube clips than you do. Turkey, one of the neighboring Armenia, uh, neighbors of Armenia on Sunday called for an immediate ceasefire and asked Armenia to end hostility towards Azerbaijan, claiming that uh, escalations could throw the region into the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Turkey might be one of the uh, instigators there. They're in and uh, very well might be. I'm not saying that they are, they aren't, but uh, I will say this Turkey Pakistan vow full support to Azerbaijan. Full support. We support Azerbaijan's position on Nagorno Karabakh, which is in line with the several whatever 
I don't really care. So, 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 the, uh, do they feel the same way about the other region that's kind of like in the thorn of Armenia? Because, see, here's the here's the situation for Armenia, the geographical reality for Armenia. You notice how it's got the finger of God coming down from it here? It's got this big old puff natal up here, and then it's got this little finger of God here. This whole area goes, if if they lose this uh, nagorno karabakh whatever, uh, and, and then... In addition to that, this enclave is still here and intact and largely serving. It's just a matter of time before this whole region is going to go. And so Azerbaijan, what they want to do is they would rather eventually secure this whole region down here for themselves. Of course they would. This is geographically untenable. And of course, for the Azerbaijanis, it's geographically untenable for them. Because if Armenia secures this, this flat land behind them, and they secure all of this mountainous region and this mountainous region right here. I mean, Azerbaijan is just open and and uh, it's flat compared to Armenia. It's uh, if I can, let me see if I can, if it gives me that uh, terrain. Let's get a sense of what we're talking about here. So you see the situation here. So for Azerbaijan, it's absolutely untenable for them to have the Armenians do this. Now, all of this is predicated upon the uh, circumstance that the Armenian form of governance, their coercive enterprise form of governance, insists upon certain... Uh, I don't know how rigid they are or, you know, I don't know enough about these nation states to tell you which one is more authoritarian in terms of the level of moral, uh, well, moral authority that they give to government and how that authority is enforced and the level of due process that these nation states have. And my understanding is uh, Armenia has a lot more. From what I understand, what a surprise. Armenia is a mountainous region, so of course they're going to have a lot less. Uh, I mean, the reality of power is that governments don't usually, this isn't always true, but they don't usually design laws and structures that force them to reveal to everyone how powerless they are when they go and try and enforce these laws, and they can't. So they're probably more open than general than the Azerbaijanis. So... So you could see why for the Azerbaijanis, this is pretty, pretty much essential. And then Azerbaijan, what does Azerbaijan offer whoever is one of its buddies and friends? It offers another port, a significant port here, Baku, very, very significant port in the Caspian Sea. Tremendous amount of geopolitical power in this uh, right here in terms of being able to control this and then this whole area around here. We got here. We got Turkmenistan, not a strong, not a significant power. Got Tehran, though. I mean, they're not. They're paying attention to Baku, and of course, as it so happens, Tehran and Azerbaijan have a pretty. Uh, well, let's see. Azerbaijan, Tehran relations. Let's just see. What does? Uh, what do they? Uh, all right, I'm going to get out of, uh, all right, let's get out of, uh, let's get out of Google Maps. How about we do that? How about we get out of Google Maps and then we'll get to, I'm just going to, what's Iran's, Iran's role? So let's see what they have to say. Okay. So Iran seems to be quietly backing Armenia in the conflict. See, this was, I wasn't sure about this. And I'm like so glad that somebody else is saying this. This was my, and I really wasn't sure because I, I, I run in this position and now it makes sense to quiet too, because they're in this position where well, on one hand, Iran is in this position where, where am I at here? Uh, Iran is in this position where they they can't come out and support a Christian government over a Muslim government. But at the same hand, Azerbaijan is is, is if we if we look at where Azerbaijan and remember the, the nature of Azerbaijan, the flatness of Azerbaijan. Uh Azerbaijan. There you go. So so let's uh let's let's revisit this again and let's go to the terrain here. I want you to remember the flatness of Azerbaijan, the mountainousness of Armenia. Armenia is uh 
in general because of the fact that that really their whole alliance is they're 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 incredibly mountainous they're so incredibly mountainous that uh, they're they don't really tend to form the type of militant imperialistic type of governments that uh, land such as Azerbaijan might produce and uh, Tehran here is a, a wonderful uh, well Tehran is really it's got these wonderful mixes of uh, realities within it and and it's got a lot of interesting uh, its own ethnic di dynamic in, in large part because of it but on the border here it it's uh, it, it is competing n with a neighbor not far away that in in part they're working in somewhat allegiance against Assad in Syria that's a common enemy they both want Assad out of Syria so there's an alliance there the great at one point it's called the great troika the new troika Russia uh, Turkey and Iran and I was like wow there's a lot of conflicting stuff here one of those again fundamental geopolitical reality is that Erdogan's great center of legitimization of the type of power that he now wields in Turkey comes upon this mythological claim that Turkey is the 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 peoplehood with which the new Islamic caliphate will be restored and, and, and they'll be the guiding light. And that's the same narrative that the people in power in Iran use to justify a lot of the types of, uh, especially the, the, the coercive types of uh, power that they claim over the people in, in their current form. So, so Iran is, is far more interested in assuring that Turkey doesn't get a footing over here than it is at assuring that the Azerbaijanis as Muslims gain influence in Armenia. And Armenia fundamentally, really, I don't really believe has a, any type of, as far as I know, and I might be wrong, but they don't really seem to have any kind of fundamental disalliance. But but in the Muslim world, there's no way right now, but who knows how that dynamic will change given the nature of all of these other nation states that have suddenly come on board with uh, with uh, Israel that have normalized relations with Israel. And in large part, they're normalizing relations with Israel because of two, not, I've seen articles that say that it's two, it's really, it's not two, one player. Some, I've seen some say it's because of Iran. And then some say it's because of Turkey, it's because of Iran and Turkey, it's because of both of them, because they both have these fundamental imperialistic mythologies. Uh, and I don't mean any respect to my Muslim friends. I mean, I believe Christ is Lord and that's my belief, but I'm not sweating your belief. But I don't mean, I mean for them what they've created, it, their own personal versions of Islam. There, so that in that sense, I mean mythologies. Uh, so the, they, they both have these similar types of mythologies that are the source of their very real political power, their ability to cut off competition by using appeals to this very uh, to this very uh, thing in the first place and uh, or, or appeals to this mythology to justify this coercion and so I could see why it is that Iran would be quietly and I've, I did a story where Iran is being accused by some of uh, helping the Armenians put people in uh, in this uh, other disputed region here where this is the the Nachavan region. This is where they they seem to be allegedly helping the Armenians trying to they want to destabilize this region. Like I said, ge ge geopolitically, as far as the geography between these two is concerned, especially if one or if, if these two have, uh, I'm not sure if Armenians are the ones that are aggressive that want, I mean, they're, they're certainly the, the aggressors in the sense that they literally want to claim Azerbaijan as theirs. So they are the aggressors in that sense, but... Uh, I don't know all the historical claims. I don't really care about historical claims. I think all that is bunk one way or another. I don't stand on history. I stand on my preferences. So in terms of geopoliticals, yeah, whatever, who can get what? And in terms of the land that's there, the reality is that it's overwhelmingly Armenian nature already. So if the Azerbaijanis were to re 
absorb this land, there would have to be pogroms, there would have to be genocides, there would have to be Armenians that were cleared out of the lands and they would repopulate them with, uh, I mean, it would be an ethnic, uh, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that's still going on all around the world. And so in that sense, I mean, I'll say pragmatically, I, I mean, I'm not saying one side is right or wrong, morally or wrong. The ultimate, uh, if, if all of the pores of Azerbaijan and all of the pores of Armenia could recognize all of the forces that are coming to bear, many of them outside for well really fundamentally these are outside forces that have vested interests and in, vested interest in kicking up uh troubles and and destabilization there could be a way for them to coexist and have this this maybe semi-autonomous region that maybe Azerbaijan and and Armenia both have some level of of benefit and control over if they were going to be pragmatic and same solution would have to be done in uh, Nakhchivan as well you can't uh, expect the Armenians to allow this thorn in their side from from a people that are fundamentally opposed to Armenia and its existence in the first place so there's a lot of dynamics going on there and uh Turkey is once again got its finger in there. I haven't even talked. I haven't really talked about the United States dynamic, but I, I think that it goes without saying that uh, that the United States is uh, well. They're going to be on the side of the Armenians, as as you can imagine. Now, I believe that based on all of these things that we're seeing, that we are entering into an age stage where uh, it looks more and more likely that the this is not going to turn into an all-out war that's what I'm predicting right now I'm predicting this will not turn into an all-out war but it will turn into a a, a sectarian destabilization of of that region probably the other both regions in question as well so there will be that unsettling. So for the human beings that live you live there, I, I, I wish I could help you. I wish there was a way I could get you people out of there. If you could somehow get to understand how living a construct like the Bill of Rights might allow you to peacefully coexist with Christians and Christians with Muslims or something to that effect. And I want to leave you just with this little note. This is an article from 2015, Automating Power, Social Bot Interference in Global Politics. So over the last, this is from 2015, well, it was published 2016. Over the last seven years, political actors worldwide have begun harnessing the digital power of social bot software programs designated to mimic human social media users on platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Increasingly, politicians, militaries, and government contracted firms use these automated actors in online attempts to manipulate public opinion and disrupt organizations communication and listen within the game of the nation state world if your if your nation state isn't doing this your nation state isn't worth it's the, the taxes that you're sending it because every nation state needs to be engaged in this otherwise why of course because that's the nature of of nation statism it's a it's a blood sport it's an absolute blood sport and includes doing things like this. So, uh, bot social media politics, uh, blah, blah, blah. Just a little bit of a, a note here where we have, where do we have your little, here we go. Selected incidents of political bot usage by country. And uh, so this is a pol polity score, whatever their methodology, and they're looking Saudi Arabia minus 10, United States 10, state outsourced to firm, state outsourced to firm. That's interesting. So U.S. pretty high, pretty high. Turkey mega high. Uh, now the United States during this per period of time, they may have put a lot of money and resources into it, but at this time, I have no idea. See, this is this makes well, okay, Russia 2011. I just want to say Russia 2016, Russia 2015, Russia 2017, 2018, 2019. Maybe they're losing some of their advantage right now, but in those years, Russia using social media poetry i mean from a distant uh, nation state sports or kind of uh, view the, the as an f as a as a nation state athleticism if, if you will ninjas freaking ninjas and uh i mean if your nation state isn't good at it they they should be so we started this story with uh, pakistani bots and pakistani bats are going to literally literally 
own, literally own Armenia with facts and figures. The thing is that, you know, I'm only tar partially joking that uh, if you win the Twitter mob war, you might very well influence. You could literally, because our leaders across the world, in, in every sphere, there's 90 plus percent of them are idiots. They really are. I mean, they're out of touch with whatever the zeitgeist, whatever the pulse, whatever, all of those. They they don't know any of that crap. They're so far removed from all of those things that uh, they're easily liable to be led to make critical decisions that affect hundreds of thousands, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, whatever the case might be, whatever level this particular idiot is in control of over the lives of however many people. They can make decisions based upon Twitter, Twitter, Twitter trends alone. They could be and and many of our of our of our own even in America governments around the world corporations around the world have been making fundamental shifts in how they create content and everything how the product that they're going to give us the conditions of us using the product the type of laws that we're now going to create our new understanding of humanity and how we're going to design the world for them from what they see on on freaking Twitter. Twitter and Twitter is a digital environment that most assuredly can be exploited, can be exploited most assuredly the most effectively in general with those that have the most money. And so we are literally at this point being controlled in a sense by Twitter hashtags in large part designed directed well not directed well in a sense directed with with human assistance but designed uh directed and 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 can and orchestrated executed by artificial intelligence deep learning m machines they may call them i mean they have the human bots too but they the machines are the ones that that you you have literally nation states that are meeting in back rooms talking about how to make their AI better than the other's AI so they can out their AIs can outthink them as far as winning the narrative on Twitter. I kid you not, I mean I have no evidence for it. It's all pure speculation, but the reality of power for me says, dude, this this it would be I mean at this point if they weren't, then I would say that they're very stupid because they should have oh, went the wrong way yeah, because they, they, then they're very stupid because they, they if, if they're not doing it, somebody else, you need to do it because you will have a huge advantage. But I, I seriously doubt that's not the case. So in this case, who knows? Maybe Pakistan will crush Armenia with an angry Twitter mob, at least get them to, to back down. Who knows? My suspicion is at this point, uh, I believe that there are more powerful forces fundamentally it's china is the greatest power that would be in support of azerbaijan continuing to f things up and armenian as or whatever whoever's doing the effing the unstabling there china may might not be un unfavorable to especially if uh if their buddy turkey can get a little bit more in there and then they can get a little bit more in there and that'd be great so I think outside of China, though, most of the other world powers are highly interested in that not being yet another expensive source of destabilization. So my prediction is Armenia is going to get some sort of call to call off their dogs. The Azerbaijanis will get that call. They're still going to have skirmishes, but uh, Armenia will probably have to concede something in way of Azerbaijan getting some recognition to having some legitimization of of claim of authority. I don't know something. So some even if it's something token. I don't know. That'll be my prediction, and I think that's gonna how that's gonna be how I'm gonna end this. Pakistan crushes Armenia with angry Twitter mob or not. Anyway, have a great rest of your day because you know why the hell not. <laughs>